How's it going, everybody? And really happy to pick up a Facebook friend from somebody from YouTube. That was really cool. And um, means a lot. Um, when people receive the what you think the truth is, and you just know it in your heart, it's the truth, and you teach it, you know, if it's the truth, then what you got was from the Holy Spirit. You don't have the free will to figure stuff out. And then um, when they understand it, you feel like you're also speaking to somebody that is of the Holy Spirit. And it's just, uh, it's just, it becomes the church. You feel like you're in the way. So it always, you know, feels good. And again, that's what all of Paul's letters were about. I feel like I just spoke about this the other day, but this was a new person today. So it was very cool. Um, so let's go into Hebrews. Let's read it in the New Living, then we'll do it again in the King James. While Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Even though Jesus was God's son, he learned obedience from things he suffered. In this way, God qualified him as perfect high priest, and he became the source of eternal salvation for all of those who obey him, which is a calling, of course. And God designed him to be the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. We did not read this the other day, right? Is that just the second time? Where am I at? What in the world? Hang on just a second. All right, I just completely confused myself. It, it's, we're on the right track. It just ends with high priest in the order of Melchizedek at the end of verse 10 and says the same at verse five again you know um a lot of the letters of paul and so forth repeat themselves over and over so it just threw me off sorry about that there is much more we would like to say about this but it is difficult to explain especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen it's talking to the hebrews again okay or the jews i can't help but wonder who was the apostle that taught the hebrews i shouldn't say it like that acts of apostles five speaks of gamal as held a great esteem by all jews as the jewish law teacher of paul Interesting. A guy named Gamal. Excuse me. Gamaliel. I'm just going to throw this in here. Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. It's just key in Peter. There are a few people that think Peter wrote it. However, the biggest obstacle against Peter writing Hebrews has to do with the eloquent Greek used.
Both Luke and the author of Hebrews are described by most New Testament scholars as the most literary writers in the New Testament. Is there a case made by Luke? It is easy to show that Paul did not write the epistle to the Hebrews. And, you know, we said that at first. It just did not sound like Paul. Um, I wouldn't be surprised a bit if Luke wrote it. It is difficult to explain, especially since you are spiritually dull and don't seem to listen. You have been believers. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you against the basic things about God's word. And of course, in the new covenant, man no longer teaches man to know the Lord, for they will already know me from least to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. Uh, that is paraphrased, but it is um, what's basically said in Jeremiah 31, verse 34. Because 33 and 34 are about the new covenant. The two previous verses, 31 and 32, um, are the explanation of why a new covenant was needed. But it's in Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34, where the new covenant from A to Z is explained in just four simple verses. Man doesn't do it. God comes in and writes his law in your hearts. So just understand that as you're reading what I just uh, read to you. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and doesn't know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. Be very interested to see how all of this reads in the King James since, of course, there's no skill whatsoever involved. It is <laughs> the work of the Holy Spirit who calls the lost sheep to be found and then puts them on a different path of righteousness and bearing fruit and repentance and coming out of the world. So let's stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go ahead instead of become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. And your faith comes by hearing God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus and Jesus said, my sheep are my voice. And Jesus said, or God said, I will put my law in their inward parts. And of course, John chapter six Come down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. All that the Father have given me shall come to me. Given when? Before the foundation of the world, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5. And this is the Father's will which has sent me that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. No man can come to me, Jesus said, except the Father which have sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. God has to draw them. Remember, I will put my law in their inward parts. That's the new covenant. Man no longer teaches man to know the Lord. Therefore, I said, no man can come unto me, Jesus said, except it were given unto him of my father. So there's no free will in the matter. So let's read Hebrews. Air fryer investigations going on here. All right. So who in the days of the flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with a strong crying and tears unto them that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek of whom we have many things to say 
and and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have a need of milk and not strong meat yeah paul didn't speak anything like this for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the words of righteousness for he is a babe drinking milk versus eating meat bible verse see paul talked about that in corinthians but he spoke in a completely different way so the comparison between milk and uh, meat or real food Paul did write about, but not with that kind of language whatsoever. And I, I knew Paul had said it. That's why I did the, did the search for it. I mean, the first principles of the oracles of God, Paul never spoke like that. Never spoke like that. It's somebody being unskillful. This is written much more it's just got a higher level of vocabulary let's just put it like that for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on unto perfection not laying oh excuse me not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward god comma that's the end of the verse and faith of course but your belief in faith is a proper walk it's a proper work you can't honor god with your lips but your heart be far from him as Jesus did say, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Easy believism is a term that's been used. Um, so on and so forth. What you're basically looking at is people that believe in the fake Jesus. Um, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. True repentance is when God's pulling you out of the world. Your dead works are just you claiming, I believe in Jesus. He's good with me celebrating Christmas. He's good with me celebrating Easter. I believe we have free will to choose Jesus. Dead works. So... Anyway... Let's get over to Revelation. Both today's study in Hebrews, you get one verse of the next chapter. 6-1, and over here to 5-1. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, around about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes, before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. The third beast had a face like a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest not, and they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying again the verse that ends in a comma as the previous verse ended in a comma and a lot of people would read this and hear this and go like that seems oh excuse me like an awfully dull and boring eternity to be 
worshiping because worshiping God is what we'll be doing forever. And what you have to realize is, is that you worship something all day, every day. But you're playing whack-a-mole with it. That feeling you get when you go to a concert, that feeling you get when you go to a college football game, high school football game, the feeling you get when you're having sex or making love to somebody that's just amazing. That amazing meal at the most amazing restaurant, the ambiance or home cooked meal or whatever it is, watching the best movie you've ever watched, whatever your highest highs, your baby's being born, watching your children do well, your grandchildren do well, whatever it is, whatever's on your list, those highs that you get on the earthly realm, yes, they'll change from day to day, but you get those little highs. When you're with God, the high will be constant, and it will be so much more of a high than as you're absorbed in your own self and your own pride because they're your grandchildren. It's your football team. You like the things that are pleasing to the eyes or the ears, watching the movie or the concert. Being in the presence of the creator of all things is so next level of pleasure and joy that what might sound like a dull and boring existence would hardly be such. The four and twenty enters fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals. Love y'all very much. Ask questions. Anytime.